my name is Thomas Haskell and I'm coming to you live from the Caribbean island of Trinidad and Tobago. I am a self-taught ceramic sculptor. I've been working in clay for most of my life in some form or another, working in sculpture for the same amount of time. I draw most of my inspiration from nature and from the history of Trinidad and Tobago. Mass Queried came about as part of my thesis during my masters. It became this collection of folklore characters, carnival characters, some original characters of my own creation that question, interrupt, navigate queer Caribbean experiences, my own queer Caribbean experience, my own navigations of selfhood, navigating the history that I represent as a Caribbean person of European descent, uh, what that history entails, what that history looked like, how to reconcile with that history and build something new that doesn't bury the past, but embraces it, understands it, and moves forward to something more fruitful. The focus in my work is with traditional carnival characters that vary from fantastical, hellish creatures to light, godlike beings, and folklore characters, which tend in the same spectrum. I have been working in clay since I was quite small. I like to give the story that my grandmother gave me clay in church to shut me up, which is why I'm a bad Catholic and a decent sculptor. I enjoy working with traditional folklore characters. They tend to give a snapshot of a certain perspective in time and yet can speak to subsequent ages, subsequent worries. In particular, I enjoy the character of La Diablesse. La Diablesse or La Diablesse, depending on where you come from. Uh, she's a succubus and I usually use she loosely. I tend to view the La Diablesse as a non-gendered entity, but that takes on the role of personifying male fear, a manifestation of male fear, if you will. Um, often described as a beauty, a beautiful woman, she will easily seduce young men and devour them, consume them in some form or fashion, if that's physical, psychic, spiritual, it's hard to say. She's a folklore character after all. But to me, she always struck out as a male construct. What could be more terrifying than a strong, powerful female entity that is capable of emasculating a man? Um, and uh, I utilized her in Masquerade as this character that questions masculinity, that questions male fate. Um, the rooting of power in the phallus. Um, what does emasculation mean to others, to me personally, to the Caribbean, to my perception of the Caribbean? I am, of course, deeply, deeply honored and appreciative to be part of the Emerging Artists 2021. Um, the recognition means the world to me and the support means that I can continue to make work that I am inspired by and that I hope inspires others. Hello, Nsika. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to join you virtually and also a massive privilege to have been chosen as one of 2021's Emerging Artists. It is my belief that a fresh approach to making contemporary functional pottery paradoxically requires a reliance on antecedent, an active recognition of our world's inherited ceramic traditions, widens our scope and provides the potter with a wealth of pre-existing fundamentals, the merits of which allow us to get more clearly at the essence of a new and dynamic synthesis of form. I had grown up in the western foothills of North Carolina, well aware of a tenuous thread of a uniquely rich pottery tradition surrounding me. However, it wasn't until I was living in Japan 
and teaching English that I myself came to pottery. In Japan, I discovered a similar respect for traditional handmade ceramics that I had known back home. Indeed, this pervasive reverence in the daily use of the handmade, the beauty of interaction and participation with these objects, opened my eyes to the importance of pots. These pots were born of a vast tradition, yet they were still a daily part of life. It was in this environment that I began my pursuit of a career in pottery. My first teachers in Tokoname, Richard Truckle and Mieko Sagisaka, immediately fostered in me an unbiased education for a wide range of traditional ceramics. I was taught vital lessons early on in the local ways of making, firing, and selling pottery. However, most surprising to me was what I learned from them about English slipware pots and the high regard being paid to the contemporary pots made back in my own home state. Here I was, a North Carolinian, studying pots in Japan, most specifically English and American pots. And all of these were simple country pots whose robust strength and coarse sophistication were being held up as exemplars across the world. They all shared a simple language of function. The unassuming charm and unquestioning beauty I was shown in these simple forms continue to provide a benchmark for which I still seek in my own work. Hello, I'm Jin Shin Yu. I'm from South Korea and currently working in Brooklyn, New York. This photo was taken in Alfred University on March 2019. I was surprised to find this piece was vandalized. At this time, there was the last in-person and Sika event held in Minneapolis. This work was the largest work for my graduate thesis exhibition, which was to be in three weeks. Since it was the main work of the exhibition, I had to put it back to its original condition. Thanks to the astounding community who helped me repair this piece, I could make it happen finishing 15 minutes before the show's opening reception. In those days, my thesis was about how to disassemble sculptural images and the process of reproducing the work, which had already been dismantled through these broken pieces, made me very confused. I was encouraged to show them as they were broken, but I was really obsessed with reassembling them and showing them as I planned. I wondered whether the incident was trying to tell me that everything I wanted to say in my thesis was a lie. I used ceramics to express my illustrations in three dimensions, and at first, I tried reproducing my drawings on the surface of clay. Afterwards, I began to focus on my illustration's main characters and skirted them in the round. While making this body of work, I was conflicted between image and sculpture. I found that working three-dimensional was more effective in expressing my concepts. I thought it was very explanatory Audiences didn't even think of the story I was trying to tell by looking at the image I made. If it is difficult to put an exact image to text, would it be easy to make an image of specific emotions? I began creating images in clay by converting them into ambiguous figures and abstract forms. In order to do this, I began by spreading, folding, and clumping clay repeatedly. I believed these abstract shapes would be effective to represent emotions to an audience. In the process of cutting, attaching, pulling, and pushing the clay, the use of my body 
formed a very close relationship between materials, expressions, and myself. This process naturally led me to the study of various structures. Most of my work had the same process like building from the bottom to the top with a safe and basic structure like working horizontally and vertically. When I was a graphic designer, the results of the project were completely dependent on the process. I wanted to change the direction of the making process. I attempt to break the vertical structure and created a structure that spread out from the interior to exterior using the hammock structure. However, through this process and the structural research, I have found that works would explode and shatter in diverse ways. What is disassembling? What happens after it breaks? What is the image before and after it breaks? What is the point of putting it back together again? My name is Xi Yuan Xu. I'm a full-time studio artist, currently based in Chicago. To start with, I would like to say thank you to Nsika for this acknowledgement and also this amazing opportunity to share my work with you all. I ran into this book in the school library when I was in college, which turned out to be a very important book for my art practice. It's called Seeds, Time Capsules of Life by Rob Kessler and Wolfgang Stabby. Rob Kessler is a British artist and Wolfgang Stabby is a scientist working at the seed bank at Royal Botanic Garden at Kew. This book is also a collaboration project between art and science. To review the unusual aspects of the seeds to the public. It is this book that leads me look closer in nature. These are the scanning electron microscopic images of two different seeds in the book. I was totally blown away by the beauty and the sophistication of the tiny light forms. The changing of viewing perspective is really fascinating. It opened a whole new world for me. My increased curiosity in the magnified microorganism led me to start my own research later on. I came to the States in 2013 for my MFA program at Arizona State University. Prior to that, I studied ceramics at China Academy of Arts, which is an art school mainly focusing on their all different kind of art majors. So my experience at ASU as a big research university is quite different. I have more opportunities to work with different groups of people, and I have the opportunity to work at the life science lab for a project. I think it is really important and helpful to go through the scientific process and getting the first-hand scientific facts back from the lab. So this picture is my all-time favorite. It's a chip of the green tea leaf that my auntie produced with a hundred times magnification. The professor suggests that it could be a pollen from the green tea. With my own interpretation, I made this piece. So in general, I look for shapes, patterns, structures, and the textures of the micro light forms and translate those visual language into my sculpture. I love porcelain. The, its pure whiteness, the glassy translucency quality have always infatuated me. And I choose to use porcelain to make my work for me, the material shares the fragility yet strength quality as those tiny light forms. And also I see the rich history of porcelain is a part of my identity. Form is not a given product, but as a product of dynamic forces that are shaped by the flows of energy and the stages of growth. I see my glaze here as soft structures 
as the flows of the energy in its growth. As I remember, when I was not sure about my thesis show in my second year in grad school, Kurt gave me an assignment, just making failures. So after a lot of failures, it came to this happy accident, the dripping glaze. The very loose quality of the glaze, I think shows a good contrast with the porcelain structure part and also gives the piece a movement. I have a particular interest in the intricate structures of the microorganisms. I am exploring more with the dynamic forms and the complexity of the structures in my recent work. For me, the structures are the traces of the growth, expansion, and decay. In the book on growth and form by Thompson, the form of an object is a diagram of forces. The regular and irregular structures grow as I slowly build them. And it's telling a story about the internal and external forces during their growth. The movement, time, and space also determine how they form. They react to the surrounding environments by altering, evolving, adapting into generate into uh, infinite new structures and creating new shapes. I use a heavy textured glaze on the surface uh, to give a very organic look. I spray layers of the glaze on the surface and use the knife to scratch the edge off to reveal the middle raw clay line. And I, after each firing, the surface accumulates and getting more. And I started the process over and over again until I feel the piece is finished. So from the beginning to finish one piece, it can take up to a couple weeks. And also one piece can be fired over 10 times. So normally people don't know how time consuming my process is. But when I think of a living organism, it usually is slow to grow in size and form. It takes time and energy. Hi, my name is Dom and I make things out of clay. I was born in Menominee, Wisconsin and grew up on the bluffs of the Minnesota and Mississippi rivers in a place known as the Bedote of the Wachipi Oyate or Star People of the Dakota. I was educated in biology and religious studies in the land of the Lakota in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For me, it all started at the age of eight with a childhood desire to become a thermodynamic engineer. Of course, I had no idea what that was or what it could mean in my life, but that's where it started. My grandfather was my direct connection to a rural agrarian life. As a very young boy, I had the privilege of sitting on the tractor's fender with my grandpa as he plowed and dragged the fields of his Wisconsin dairy farm. The furrows, when plowed over, create a beautiful cascade of earth like a wave. Knowing that I myself was not bound to be a farmer, I still yearned for a connection to the land and found that connection when I began making pots. My function-based clay work is informed not only by a general appreciation of Japanese aesthetics, but a direct tie to the Karatsu tradition of the Nakazato family. Some 14 generations ago, a number of villages on the Korean peninsula were razed to the ground, and the villagers rounded up to be resettled on the southernmost islands of Japan, with the task under penalty of death to make ceramic wares pleasing to the Emperor of Japan, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. This was the origin of the Karatsu potters, and each time I sit down at the potter's wheel to make a pot, I can't help but think about displacement and struggle, but also durability and growth. As a person of African American descent, I am connected to this history through the transatlantic slave trade, Translocation and its gruesome repercussions also reveals stories of beauty, growth, and development that are transcendent. I am a black American 
who has come to know some aspects of the Karatsu tradition as a touchstone, a metaphorical port of call in my own making practice. Statistically, I am an abnormality. I'm the grandson of German dairy farmers and freed blacks of Mississippi. My cultural roots are variegated and tangled. Agricultural opportunity and enslavement are a part of my family history. I often find myself in social situations where I am the only visible minority and regarded as an outsider. As the son of a white woman and a black man, I am often somewhere at the fringes of a group by being somewhere in the middle of it. This affords both perspective and at times personal hardship. Immigrant origin is commonplace in the American social landscape and blended cultural heritage is an increasingly common occurrence in contemporary America. However, racial minorities are still viewed as strangers in some communities, and as a result, I'm interested in the social formation and persistence of groups. Many of the objects that I craft place unlike groups or individuals in close proximity to one another, becoming neighbors and strangers simultaneously. They are reminiscent of the work of sociologists whose investigations help me better understand myself. People like David Napier. Difference is a thing to be observed, acknowledged, appreciated, and venerated. I feel that our society has not yet evolved to a point that difference and physical distinctions are seen as objective components of society that are free of negativity and neglect. I believe that in order to come together as a cohesive and supportive society, that we must come to accept that our individual differences have the capacity to drive us apart or bind us together, depending on perspective. Accepting this reality will allow us to acknowledge our fears and proclivities, which in turn creates better relationships and healthier individuals. Hello everyone, this is Grace Han, one of the emerging artists for NCCA 2021. I'm originally from South Korea and studied Korean traditional ceramics. At the beginning, I created what I was familiar with, which were mostly traditional vessel forms. I was encouraged to be more contemporary and conceptual, but I couldn't fully understand what that meant. From those struggles, what I learned about myself is that I create large pieces when I have negative emotions. I stress my body to release stress from my body. At the end of the MFA, I created this installation work called Two Path, Two Identities, One Individual, showing my confusion between the twos. As a Korean and a new Canadian, traditional ceramics and contemporary ceramics, and the two languages I speak, Korean and English. I set it up in a way where people could interact with my work instead of just looking at them and walking away. I created two columns as a gate for people to enter into the space and a path where the audience could walk along. In 2018, I created my very first performance video, Be Free From Myself To Be Myself. In this video, I created a large vessel in a traditional silk dress that doesn't breathe at all. I used the kick wheel to maximize my physicality in the process of making. I made slabs by throwing clay onto the floor, adding more physicality. I pedaled clay walls with tools that I made, and I spun the wheel with my bare feet. The raw images and sounds of me sweating and exerting myself physically 
after hours of work were all captured in this video. I felt like as if I was showing a raw part of myself. In 2019, I had two concurrent exhibitions called Touch the Conversation. I invited the audience to directly interact with my work by sitting on them, moving them around, stacking them, etc. When I returned to the site for the closing reception, I saw all the small pieces moved into one spot away from where I originally had spread them throughout the floor. Broken pieces hung on the wall sideways and many shards on the floor from several pieces that had been broken. It was vivid evidence of the conversation that had taken place and it was what I was looking for. All those changes provided me a great deal of satisfaction and pleasure. On the other side, I displayed a range of small to large fermenting vessels called ongi. Instead of just showing them in the space, I also wanted people to experience the work. So I fermented rice wine using the actual vessels right before the show and recorded the subtle sound of the fermentation. As people were entering to the space, they were able to hear the sound of the fermenting and see those vessels as real functional vessels that had actually been used. For me, making process is very important because the true self comes out during the process, especially when I use traditional techniques because my whole body is engaged. In the process, I discover a huge freedom and release from all kinds of expectations. I will keep seeking how I could be true and authentic with my work and continue to find ways to have that authentic conversation with the audience.